So here at Clinical Physio, we know that learning anatomy can be hard, but also pretty boring. So would you like some cool mnemonics to help you remember anatomy of the shoulder and elbow? If that's what you're here for, you've come to the right place. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So for this tutorial, there's only one place to start and that is our 3D anatomy model. So guys, let's start at the shoulder joint. Now, if you want a cool memory aid to help you remember the key rotator cuff muscles, just remember the acronym SITS, S-I-T-S, -S, because each letter of this corresponds to one of the four muscles that make up this group. So the first S stands for supraspinatus, which effectively means superior to the spine of the scapula, supraspinatus. This muscle has a key role in external rotation of the shoulder and perhaps also contributes a little bit towards abduction as well. Then we have the I, which is for infraspinatus, this time inferior or below to the spine of the scapula. This muscle also contributes to external rotation. Then we have T for teres minor. Once again, this also contributes to external rotation of the shoulder. And notice how SIT, these muscles are in order from top to bottom on the posterior aspect of the scapula. Then we have the final S, which is for subscapularis. As you can see, this muscle is located on the anterior surface of the shoulder and is responsible for medial rotation of the glenohumeral joint. So the next mnemonic is a lady between two majors. What on earth is this all about? Well, this helps us remember the key muscles that insert around the bicipital groove of the proximal humerus. So a lady between two majors. Now the lady refers to the latissimus dorsi muscle. So this muscle primarily, as you can see, originates from the posterior aspect of the trunk, but then it moves anteriorly and swoops around the scapula in order to insert into the medial aspect of the bicipital groove. Now, the two majors. This refers to teres major and pectoralis major. So first of all, teres major. We can see that this is a smaller muscle also located on the scapula or the posterior trunk. And then we can see that this runs around again to insert into the medial aspect of the bicipital groove here. And then we have pectoralis major. As you can imagine, this is one of our key pec muscles and it's located on the anterior chest before inserting into the lateral aspect of the bicipital groove. So there you go, a lady between two majors. So now let's move on to the elbow joint. And next we've got a really good one, which is the three Bs of elbow flexion. And that's because there are three key elbow flexors and all of them start with the letter B. So first of all, we have the biceps brachii muscle, no doubt the most famous of the three. Now, this muscle has a role in elbow flexion, clearly, but also has a little bit of a role in supination of the forearm too. Now, as you can see, this is a two-headed muscle and it originates on the scapula. The long head originates at the supraglenoid tubercle and the short head originates at the coracoid process of the scapula before it moves down and inserts into the radial tuberosity of the radius. We then have the next B, which is the brachialis muscle. This lies just underneath or deep to the biceps brachii muscle. It originates from the mid-humerus region and inserts onto the ulna bone. And then finally, we have brachioradialis. Now, this muscle is also located on the lateral side of the forearm as the brachialis is. We can see that it originates from the lateral supracondylar ridge, which is an eminence on the distal lateral humerus. And then, as the name suggests, brachioradialis, it inserts into the radius at the radial styloid, right at the distal tip of the radius bone. So there you go, the three Bs of elbow flexion, biceps brachii, brachialis, and brachioradialis. 
And then finally, we have the acronym BEST, B-E-S-T. And this helps us remember the key muscle groups that are innovated and are supplied by the radial nerve. Now, the radial nerve is a terminal branch of the brachial plexus. And as you can see, it runs all the way down past the humerus and past the radius before moving towards the hand. So it's a really long nerve. So B-E-S-T. The B stands for brachioradialis. We looked at this muscle a second ago. It's a key muscle on the lateral side of the forearm. And as we said a second ago, it plays a key role in elbow flexion. The E stands for the extensor group, and this is the extensors of the wrist and fingers. Now, there are quite a few of these. This includes the extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor digitorum, extensor digiti minimi, and extensor carpi ulnaris. As we said, these muscles are responsible for extending the wrist and fingers. Now, when you have a patient who has a radial nerve palsy, you might find that they present with a wrist drop because they have a lack of power in extending the wrist and fingers, and therefore their hand might lie limp in a flex position. Then we have S, which stands for the supinator muscle. As you can imagine, this muscle has a key role in supination of the forearm. And then we have the triceps brachii group. The triceps are chiefly involved in elbow extension, but they do have a minor role in extension of the shoulder too. So there you go, B-E-S-T brachioradialis, the extensor muscles, supinator, and the triceps brachii muscle, all innervated by the radial nerve. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please support us by smashing that like button. It's the best thing you can do to help us create even more brilliant anatomy videos like this. If you want more of our content, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram, at Clinical Physio, and we've got loads of brilliant resources on our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.